Hello, you lovely people. My name is Albert Mooskies. You may know me as Edgy Albert, and I'm back on YouTube to break down a very, very difficult question that I've been grappling with all day. Well, actually, almost a whole week. And I've done a few versions of this. I can't quite get it right. I've also just moved into a new place. It's beautiful, I promise. I'm hunched against the fireplace because I don't really have a great setup yet. I'm working on that, but as promised, it's much more conducive to making videos. I'll be able to do it more often. And yeah, happy to be back. Thank you so much for the love on the Levi's history one. I love fashion history. It's kind of my bag, but I also love giving my opinion on things. And what we're about to address today is a very difficult question that people love to ask, which is, if you had to choose five pairs of shoes that every person should have, what would those shoes be? And that's just hard, right? I think the last time I had only five shoes was maybe in college. And I think that people that love clothes, and also I have a really, I have a whopper of a bug bite right here. It hasn't gone away. I think we, we, a lot of us have a problem with hoarding clothes specifically shoes. You know, like when kids that grow up in a family with a bunch of siblings have this kind of food scarcity thing. They protect their plate when they eat and they just try and gobble up as much as they can. I feel like we are that way with clothes, a lot of us. Because I think I didn't have parents that would buy me nice stuff, really. Like, they would shop for me at Target when I was growing up. And it's like, I wasn't ashamed of that, but I didn't have, like, fancy stuff, nice stuff. And it wasn't until that I sort of had my own money that I could buy the things I wanted. That's obviously hard because clothes are expensive. And when you're in college, it's very frustrating because you can't always get the stuff you want. You simply cannot afford it. You have to save for things. You have to research really exhaustively. It's hard. So I think that when you get a good job and you're able to afford the things you want, it's natural to start to hoard things. So I think that's an impulse we need to try and push against. This has been a problem for me because people are sending me more stuff. I didn't used to get sent stuff for free. And now that I do, it's sort of surreal. I thought the only way that I could answer this question was to sort of frame it very specifically. And so I want to frame it like this. Let's say in this scenario, you are a person who has a decent budget and is just starting fresh. You may have things in your closet already that you wear, but maybe you're not the most stoked about that stuff. That's okay. Don't throw any of that away. Don't throw any of your old clothes away. If there's something you're really sure you're not going to wear, donate it, take it to Goodwill or wherever, or to a local, local you know, a homeless shelter or, or an organization that you're passionate about that accepts clothing donations. But you never know what's going to go back in a style. And you'll never know what you bought, uh, you know, previously that you'll end up having a knack for later. There are definitely pieces of clothing that I've had in my past, so many pieces of clothing, especially I bought in college, that I really saved for and I bought and weren't quite right, but I wish I had kept them. It would be so cool to have have all of those pieces that I saved and scrimped for. And some of them I just like, you know, left places just because I didn't have the energy to transport it with me. So don't throw away any of your old clothes. The other framing device is that I can only give you guys advice on what I personally have. More and more I'm realizing that the only way that I can really educate myself about new clothing and new brands is to buy it and wear it. Because it's one thing to see stuff on Instagram or wherever you consume clothing content, TikTok in our case also, but it's quite another to hold it in your hands and wear it and say, yes, I get it. Most recently that happened to me with Corridor. Corridor New York is a great brand. You've probably seen their stuff. It's a brand that people are always like, brands you've never heard of, you know? And it's like, trust me, we know what Corridor is. Corridor is more low key, you know, as some brands go. They're based in New York. They, they really have an emphasis on beautiful textiles. And, you know, I, I, for me, a lot of my stuff is very classic, kind of Americana-inspired, Western-inspired. It, it rarely gets too experimental. And I think the reason I was sort of shying away from Corridor for so long was that it maybe seemed a little out of my out of my niche. But then I got I got a shirt of theirs in a white cotton fabric. It's kind of like the um it's kind of the texture you would see in like a Guayabara shirt. It is so good. It is so solid. And so now I'm like, okay, I get why people fuck with this brand and I'm seeing stuff that they make that really fit into my vibe or would kind of enhance the vibe that I'm trying to cultivate. I can talk shit about 
shoes I've seen and I don't like, but I can't really recommend shoes to you that I don't own. Although I can suggest them and direct you, but obviously if I don't own something, it makes it a little harder. So what I've decided to do with this question is to cheat. <laughs> I don't think I can get five pairs of shoes in there because I need two pairs of athletic shoes at least, and I don't want to count those. I want a pair of hiking boots, just like dorky Salomons. Salomons. I got a pair of Salomons at REI way back before the Salomon boom. They're not like cool by any means. They're just, they're just Salomons. They're great for hiking. The next pair is that I need a pair of running shoes. I run on New Balances currently. I miss with my whole heart the Clifton 7s. Clifton, the Clifton 7 was just a great shoe from Hoka. Sorry if I didn't say that already, from Hoka. Hoka's Clifton 7 was so good. Now they make a Clifton 8. It's not as good, at least for me. Maybe it like fits your foot like a dream, but the other one was just perfect on my foot. It doesn't work anymore. So I need, I need those things. And probably like if you play tennis all the time, if you're a climber, if you play basketball, basketball is different because ba so many basketball sneakers are like actually really cool and do double duty things like running not so much hiking maybe and that's the challenge with like a technical sneaker is that oftentimes they're not aesthetic as far as we've come with like gorp core and all those kinds of things they're not the most aesthetic so let's just take that out of the mix we have we have our one or two pairs of athletic sneakers that we use all the time they're comfortable they get the job done. They may not be cool, but they're what we need for the time being. So I have set up five categories of shoes here. The first one I call the hip walker, a walking shoe, a catch-all that's still trendy and cool. The second category would be the retro sneaker or the classic sneaker, something that isn't necessarily the most utilitarian, but is a good looking shoe that 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 anyone would be happy to have in their wardrobe and probably a lot of the sneakers that you see worn kind of would fit in that category then the third category is a leather shoe the fourth category is a leather boot lace up fourth category and then the fifth category is the like impractical leather shoe that you think you would wear most that could be a loafer that could be a cowboy boot that could be something it's going to be a boot that you're going to like stand around in a bar in and not one that you'll necessarily put miles into. Let's start at the top. Let's go through it. So the weird thing about this question before I dive all the way in is that it's from a friend of a friend. I don't know the friend of a friend. I know the friend. She and I went to high school and they are asking because they know me and they follow me and, and they wanted my advice on this, which is a very surreal experience, if you can imagine, where, where now people that don't know me or that didn't know me know me, if that makes sense, which is weird. Can it be fun? Absolutely. But is it strange? Yes. I talked a little bit about running shoes, just the dorky kind of functional sneakers or boots that, that you need to do whatever you need to do. Um, maybe like, you know, if, if you like live somewhere snowy and need like a really just functional snow boot, I guess the stuff that you just need is not really, a lot of times you can't make those cool. You just have to just wear them and go with it. So just do no sweat. So in terms of the hip walker, I can tell you what I am gravitating towards. For me, it's often a pair of New Balances. It's not the most original. I'm not really a sneakerhead, so I'm not like a tastemaker by any means. But this is also an area where you could get a sneaker that verges more on technical, that has a little bit more like umph to it. So like I said, I don't own any of the cool Solomon XT4s, XT6s, the um the this one, whatever the fuck it's called. I don't own those, but I see them worn. I know people are fans. That's out there. Is that bubble about to burst? I don't know. It's also definitely a point where this has become more of a staple shoe, despite its price, than it is like a statement shoe, if that makes sense. People have this shoe now. It's not like low key anymore. And that's okay. I mean, sneakers don't have to be. And it doesn't really matter where you get in on the wave of popularity. If you want something, you should get it if it speaks to you. For me personally, the New Balance 990 V5 is such a good walking shoe. In the pandemic, I would take long walks with it. I mean, we're still in the pandemic, but you know, in the more lockdown parts. Also, when I busted my ankle and I really needed support, that was a shoe I wore all the time. Of the New Balances I own, I also have the 992s, the 993s. The 990 V5 is like comfy. Like those shoes are a little bit verging more on like we're hip shoes, like we're cool sneakers. They're not quite as friendly on the feet as the 990 V5s. 
The 990v5s, because they have suede, leather in some cases, the mesh. There's so much texture, they age really well. Let me show you mine. This is where I wish I had my mic stand set up again. This is the 990v5. You can see I've kind of creased it, but there's a lot going on here. There's leather here. There's suede here, there's reflective bits. It has a lot of what I like in a sneaker, which is just, it's visually interesting. There's just a lot happening and I love that. You know, I think a lot of sneakers, sneakers I don't like so much, they're just kind of flat, but all these panels and these are the made in USA ones. So they're made really well. And I have a second pair of these I've kept on ice. One to rock, one to stock as they say. So this is my go-to walking shoe and I can show you a new pair, but there's a ton of life in these and you can wear them really hard. My second pair is this, the 574. You can tell it's just that there is a little less going on here. It's not made in USA. The craftsmanship is not the same level. It doesn't have quite as much going on visually, but it looks great on foot. And these are both shoes mostly that I would really only wear with like shorts. Look, you can just see how this, this is like a more developed Pokemon than this one, you know, more evolved, whatever. I never really played Pokemon, but you can see this is like the grown up version of this. And the 574 is cheaper, but nothing to shake a stick at. Still suede, still visually interesting to some degree, but yeah, not as much going on. There are tons of hip walking shoes out there, but I'm not the best versed in them. So I, I'm, I'm, I apologize. If Nike wants to send me shoes that they love, I would take them. If Adidas wants to send me shoes that they love, I would take them. If Asics wants to send me shoes, I would absolutely take them. <laughs> I feel like Asics is the new frontier of these cool shoes. Um, a lot of hip walking shoes. Asics had a Jound collab recently that looked really cool. But I know that Asics has kind of a chunkier, more running based background. And I think that would lead to really good shoes, really good walking shoes, excuse me. Hoka has also entered this arena with some shoes that aren't explicitly running shoes. They're Clifton L, which I should probably try if it's similar to all the Clifton 7 last, is cool. Um, it's got kind of a, it's like an alien's shoe, but not in an over, you know, in a overly zealous way. Uh, they also have that Mafate, Mayfate, Mafati. I don't know how it's pronounced, but um, that one is cool too. I mean, very similar to the 990, honestly, in some details. I think what I am gravitating towards most in this category is something chunky, kind of modern, or simply hip. Basically, if you would see a hot fashion girl on her hot girl walk wearing this, it's a good bet that it's a good shoe for you. These are not shoes that I personally wear with long pants because I, I just feel weird with that. I just can't really wrap my head around that. Like, I'm just like, I don't love wearing sneakers with like outfits. Um, I'm more of a shoe, you know, traditional leather shoe and boot guy, but I have come to an age where I can accept that comfort is nice. You know, I don't want to be breaking in leather shoes all day. Our next category is that classic sneaker. And this is the next level, you know, if the last, it's probably a notch or two notches in practicality lower than the last one. And these are things like a Cortez. Look how cooked these are. Nike Cortez, Reebok Classic Leather or Leather Original, whatever they call this one. Things that are like you can stand in and are comfortable, but you're not going to wear on the long haul. Air Force One, shoes like that. And you know, they're not made of like super technical materials. They can be made of canvas. Chuck 70s, get yourself a pair of Chuck 70s. These are really like the most versatile sneakers ever, you know, and they'll never be out of style. You know, there, there's kind of an ebbs and flows to their popularity, but all of these sneakers, they're all pretty classic, available all the time deals, and you're gonna wanna hold on to them. Don't get rid of sneakers. It's hard to predict what'll be cool, what won't, but a lot of, because these are so like standard, they're not they're not gonna go anywhere another one that is was very hyped this year or in the last two years the 550 from new balance this is just a general release one i love it because it's got the suede toe it just has it's just kind of really cool it's a great shoe and again like it's comfortable but it's not a walking shoe it's a basketball shoe originally so beyond that the reebok club c that's a shoe that's so easy to wear with anything and I always wonder when, when, when are we going to see the downfall of the Reebok Club C and it just never comes. Last summer it was blowing up. This summer I'm seeing it all over the place again. It's just, it's so versatile. It's also really affordable. I have a pair in the back, but I don't want to grab them. Got a lot of closets in this new space, so that's good. But tons of, tons of great options, right? Like there's just a ton of good shit. I'm getting sleepy. 
these retro ones can be chunky and funky the new balance 992 993 but these are all more like shoes that a certain cool guy wears uh a lot of these sneakers are like i'm imagining a guy with big mid wash jeans that are kind of baggy but he's cinched them with a belt and you can see like the top of his calvins over the waistband and like a big shirt or a crop shirt and just like a long stacking jean that's kind of my vision in my head very cool right like so and some of them are more retro so they can work into a wardrobe like mine that's a little more classic inspired there are tons of there are tons of ways you could go about this if if classic to you means like jordan fours or dunks or sambas you know there are tons of ways you can go with this it, it, or vans i'm not a vans person anymore but vans canvas leather whatever just these are like really classic sneakers that won't go out of style if you're gonna stay in this game long and continue buying sneakers you can get weirder shit but like white leather black canvas red swoosh you know that stuff is really easy to work into the rest of the wardrobe and we're having to go kind of lowest common denominator here just to start and we can go from there if you're starting to think wow this guy sure has a lot of shoes you are correct the thing is I didn't buy all of them. I, I'm at a point in my career now where, where people will offer me store credit or just send me stuff if they think I'll like it. And that's how I get a lot of stuff. Or some of this, a lot of this stuff has been purchased over years and years and years. I've kept a lot of my stuff I've had since college. So that's the hard part about like stomaching, buying five shoes at the same time is it costs a lot of money. So adding to one's collection slowly but surely is a good way. And it's also a good way to appreciate and cherish the stuff you have when you have it when I only had one or two pairs of sneakers I wore them a lot more than now when I have to like choose from several I'm also realizing I have so many white shoes white gray black shoes some brown gotta get some more colorful things in the rotation our next category is the leather shoe you see people wearing doc martens all the time i'm not a doc martin fan because they're not being very transparent with their labor practices i'm more of a solivare guy you've perhaps seen my tiktok about solivare if not you're probably like that's a doc martin solivare makes their shoes in the factory that doc martens used to be made in doc martin is an english company for a long time they manufactured their shoes in northamptonshire and they outsourced all their labor to Asia, they don't say where in Asia, to just bring down costs and the way a lot of brands do to exploit less stringent labor laws in these countries. So by contra so basically all the people that had worked in this old factory teamed up and bought it and they have all the old machines, all the old techniques. So they're making Doc Martens like Docs used to be made before they were sent away. And then if you're saying, oh but Doc Martens has their made in England line that accounts for like 0.02% of Doc Martin's output. So let's not, let's not cape for Docs. So if you want that shoe and you want to support somebody doing really good work that is ostensibly Doc Martin, except it breaks in better and it lasts longer because it's actually stitched. The sole is stitched to the upper, which is not what Docs do anymore. You know how Docs have that yellow stitching around the toe? That's not real on Docs. It is on this. So Solivare is a great option. This is a Solivare Gibson, just like a really standard shoe. I love wearing these with jeans. Don't really wear these with shorts so much, but you could if you wanted to, I really wanted to freak it. Paraboot. I love Paraboot. I'm also going with more like chunky shoes for this category because they can work almost as a boot, a nice chunky sole. They're a little more of a statement. They go with more things, I feel like. And then if you were to go any to anything nice, you could just clean these or shine them up a little bit and they look almost brand new and they could work with a nicer outfit easily. I think I'm mostly just gonna say leather lace-up shoes for this category because they're a little more versatile in terms of wear, like if you needed, if, assuming you only have one pair of this kind of shoe, I love a loafer a lot, but I just don't think that if you only have five shoes that the loafers may be the best bet. Cause these are, these are shoes that I can walk a fairly good distance in. I mean, this is a shoe made for walking around Paris. Really? I walked, when I studied abroad, I wore these all the time in the rain. I've worn them in the snow. Like they're really good at what they do. And it, that is reflected in the price. They are not cheap. They're hard to get in the, well, they're not hard to get in the U.S., but they're more expensive in the U.S. Solivare, yeah, I mean, these are really good shoes for, like, 
putting miles in and I don't really feel like loafers are walking shoes necessarily. If you know for your life that you're not a big walker or you're just going to be driving places, that's cool. Or you feel like your sneakers will fulfill that category. I'm just suggesting this because again, only five. Our next category, lace up boots. Lace up boots are impossible. These are the fucking worst and I'll tell you why. You need so much time for a leather boot to get right, to get good. A leather shoe is easier because it's not actively like gripping your ankle and a boot that is you know higher and covering your ankle that's a pain in the ass to break in i don't know why that's just like what's hardest for me and the thing about a pair of boots not pair of boots pair of boots is it's kind of like finding the perfect pair of jeans because it's something that you're going to ide- theoretically be wearing your whole life and breaking in and traveling in and it's so hard to find a pair of boots that's just going to work for all aspects of your life or that you're going to like enough long enough for you to break it in all the way. And I say lace up for the same reason I did lace up shoes because it's just going to be more versatile. I wear cowboy boots a ton, but I'm not walking a long ways in them. If I lived in New York or something and I was walking in the winter, I would wear lace up boots, something with a good sole, you know, and this can really, this is kind of contingent on where you live, what your needs are. Red wing is clearly like one of the, the like big ones, but I don't know. Just like I've owned red wings. I have two pairs in my closet currently one is a pair of iron rangers that someone else broke in for me like i just don't care i'm still looking for the perfect pair of boots and when i find them i'll let you know they're really fancy brands like wesco and viberg white's boots they make really fancy six inch service boots but you know like they just never look as good as like a worn in pair you see in the movies and so and just it's hard to buy used boots because you never know what the deal is and they've essentially broken into someone else's foot so i mean you're shit out of luck if those don't work that being said you do need a pair do your research alden makes good boots there's so many people making boots just don't buy bad boots i did a shoe and boot review earlier so you can check that out if you need more details on how this works but yeah just don't don't buy a shitty boot that's all and this is the last one this is the fun one. This is like what the choose whatever the fuck you want one. For you, if you really are a sneakerhead and you want another pair of sneakers, put that in here. If you are a cowboy boot guy, throw in your cowboy boots here. If you want loafers, and I think everyone should have loafers, but they're not extremely versatile. I mean, they're versatile fashion-wise, but not versatile function-wise, then throw that in here. But as I said, you know, I have a lot of learning to do. I think, you know, if I were to get another pair of loafers, I would probably get some Blackstock and Webers. I have the 316 collab. It has the crepe sole, which is really cool and very comfy, but just not totally my vibe. I'd love to get another pair of their of their loafers if possible. Basswegians are super easy to come by, even, even uh, vintage. And, uh, yeah, cowboy boots, um, Tacovas, ranch road boots, Lucchese. Lucchese is really nice, but something you want to consider with cowboy boots is some are, are like dress boots and they're not really the most durable. They're very expensive, but they're kind of just for show and like for being a root and tootin' cowboy at the bar and you want to avoid putting too many miles in them. This is why this is the kind of the fun category because it's stuff here that maybe you wouldn't wear all the time. They're just be fun for outfits. So I really hope that answered your question. And I know I kind of cheated by adding new spaces, but if you're building your new wardrobe, be patient with yourself. Don't rush. I th- and also take a few things into account. And one of them is people like me who you see dressing online have resources that are not available to regular consumers. It's okay to have a tight selection of shoes. It's okay to outfit repeat. That's how clothes should be worn. They get better with time and wear. And treasure this time now when you have a small rotation and you can really individually spend time with your clothing and your shoes because someday like me, you'll have several closets worth of bullshit and it'll be kind of hard to choose what you're wearing out. And that might seem like, oh, I'd love to have that problem, but it is a little wasteful. And keep in mind also, I didn't buy all this stuff. Influencers you're seeing online, on YouTube, on TikTok, wherever, we're not buying all of our stuff. A lot of that stuff is being sent to us and we don't have to Additional income. So it's not like with, I mean, some influencers have really are very, very successful, but you know, it's unconventional income. So it's not like you can be shopping all the time and you can't really keep up demand 
because there's demand for you to have new stuff all the time. So you have to kind of sacrifice, make sacrifices and take free stuff. And so just keep that in mind. And even if you're posting fit pics all the time, like wear stuff in, choose things that last. A lot of these will get better with time. And sneakers, boots, shoes, jeans, belts, jackets, it's all better. The longer you wear it, the more you treasure it. Hello, everybody. I wanted to film an addendum to this video. I was working on this video. I got COVID for a week. I'm back. I still feel bad, but I am healthy now. And I just wanted to give you a little more juicy content. We were talking shoes, boots, sneakers, etc. And in the interim, you know, having nothing to do but look at the internet, think about clothes, I of course now have new shoes that I would recommend on this list. And I probably have already put images up earlier but I just wanted to like talk to you about them. So basically something that happened was there was kind of an ASICS renaissance in my brain, in my heart, in my mind. And that all happened because I was sent ASICS by Tilly's. Tilly sent me a bunch of shoes. Any brands listening, I did just have COVID. If you're sick, it's a really nice treat to get a big box of shoes and clothes. So it doesn't matter who you are everybody's got gems that's the thing right you don't think of Tilly's as being they're not like an essence I mean they're in malls um, but they did have the ASICS gel light 3 which I've been hearing all this stuff about ASICS I was like sure give me some ASICS they did give me these ASICS and these ASICS are in fact sick I would put those into probably our retro classic sneaker uh, category because they're all white leather. They have this really crazy, people are calling it a shussy, this like split tongue instead of a traditional tongue right in the middle. Apparently, I heard from someone on TikTok that that's, that was an innovation for runners because cross-country runners, the tongue would kind of slide to either side of the shoe. So it's kind of futuristic, honestly. So it's classic, but it has this edge to it. So it, it, therefore it could go in our trendy, our trendy walkers category. So that does double duty, really good shoe, comes in multiple colors, not especially impressive online, like on the page, but on foot, incredibly impressive. I feel has more presence than like a Reebok, for example, like I don't like how flat your feet look in Club C's. I should just show you, they're over here. Online, they look kind of stumpy. Here they are. Maybe they even look a little stumpy in person. Can you see that split tongue right there? But on foot, on foot. <laughs> this is terrible. On foot. <laughs> wow. I really gotta get my production better. On foot, pretty nice, right? Cool. Like weirdly cool. Then. And they're so comfy, they're really comfy. The other ASIC that I got obsessed with, is that the singular? The other pair of ASICs that I got obsessed with are the Gel 1130s, specifically the gray colorway. I have one in a cart. They're only in my size left on, on Urban Outfitters. I hate to support Urban Outfitters. If you don't know, CEO, very conservative, has voted against progressive um, candidates, was very anti-gay marriage. Urban Outfitters, like, look, if you work for Urban, w what's going on over there? Fire that guy, start clean, or like repent, like do something public to repent because you need to cleanse your store's image. Like that ownership is toxic for your brand. Anyways, gel 1130s, the gray colorway, look very much like a pair of New Balances. Honestly, they look better than the 990 V6s that have been announced, which in turn just look like a Hoka ripoff. They look, the silhouette is good. They look long. I like a shoe that looks long, but not like a Cortez like hot dog long. I'm obsessed with those. There's other colorway, the white mesh, the silver. That's one of those purchases where it's like, this is a fashion purchase, but this is a no one's gonna fuck you in these purchase. There's a difference. Sometimes the cutting edge of fashion is not fuckable. And that's just something we have to, that's just something we gotta put out there. You're not always fuckable on the cutting edge, on the bleeding edge. So yeah, no one's gonna fuck me in my mesh ASICs, but hey, you gotta do nice things for yourself. I mean, that's why I wear cowboy, you know, this, this outfit I'm wearing, fuckable, put mesh shoes on, no longer fuckable. And that's, that's just how it goes. Some of you might disagree, but that's how it goes. Before I moved out, I told my roommate, if I ever buy a pair of thousand dollar boots, shoot me in the head. And Caitlin, if you're listening, you may have to shoot me in the head because I do want a pair of Gweedies. I've been seeing them all over the place. This would file under your last category because though you can wear these all the time, I don't know how versatile 
they would be they're made of horse leather so good although actually I, i'm not gonna weigh in on the politics of horse leather I, I would just be talking out of my ass there is a low heeled back zip model that i've seen worn a lot my friend michael who runs alter which is a great new denim brand in la which you should ch check out he has them they look so nice but I love a little bit more of a heel. The Guidi boot with a little more of a heel has the zip in the front. Uh, uniforms of Daryl, who is one of the best outfit Instagrams out there, and I'd recommend you follow him. He has those. They really have a really beautiful presence. I don't know if I could personally rock those as well. I have an old, I had an old coworker at Selfage who wore them all the time, and they looked really good. This is something that's taken me a long time to come around to. So I wanna thank you for bearing with me in the earlier chunk. I was didn't know it yet, but I was under the weather, and I'm back. And I, you know, I keep saying this. It's kind of like journaling. I keep saying I'm gonna be better at posting YouTube's YouTube videos, but I hate editing them. And uh, but I appreciate your support. As always, I'll keep you updated on new and cool stuff that I find and wear. And love you guys. Take care.